Hi, I'm Isaac Klein, Klein Design Websites. I'm gonna show you how to make something that hopefully will inspire you to do something similar or you could recreate this exact same thing if you want to. But what it is, is just a, is it's a cross-site support ticket system that I built inside of Wix Studio with the dashboard pages functionality that's inside of there with some VLO code, of course, and the CMS was necessary as well. But we got one, two, three, four, five, six different elements in this. I'm gonna to try to make this not super long, but explain it for questions that I would have if I was watching something like this. But essentially what it is, is a dashboard uh, page right here. You click on it, you come here, like as a client, this would be my client site. That's the purpose I'm going to use it for. And now that I have it working, 99.9%, .9%, there's some extra things I wanna add into it, but now that I have it working, I can change kind of the look of it too as well and make it look a little bit better. But we'll put in their name because some of my clients, there's multiple people that work in their business and I wanna know who it is that actually is reaching out about it that usually has a lot to do with uh, the request. And the date submit pops up there. <clears throat> and then as they keep doing this, uh, they will have all of these in here. So this is very similar to you know, putting a ticket in for Wix customer uh, care. But you'll have it right here, and then it also goes into their CRM right here, or CMS, sorry. So I'm gonna refresh this page here, and you'll see this. One little kink that I'm working out here is just how it presents this immediately. Either way, it works there. And if you put closed in here, like this is not, 100% ideal to close it out on their site. Uh, and then it would be, you know, said closed on here. I would want to do that on my site and send that response to their site and just be notified when a new one comes through on my site through maybe an automation or triggered through an email, something of that nature. But you get the gist of it. To make this work, what I did was I went in here to pages there's this tab for dashboard pages. I created support ticket by clicking here, add dashboard page. And then in here, I've got container. I've got inputs, a button. So for inputs, they're right here. For date picker, it's right there. And then the submit button, you could just use any button actually. So that right there, um, I did use stacks in this. So I've got just text, I've got a repeater in this repeater, made a stack of these. And <clears throat> the things to note here for the code, I've got the submit ticket button. You need to label this. So if you click on it, change the ID to what it says in the code there. So submit ticket button. We've got the reporter input. We've got the ticket submit or subject input, message input, today's date input, and status backend input. So this would be the status backend input. This is the today's date input. This one is the messages input. This one is the ticket subject input. And this is the reporter input. Then you'll see in the code also, I wanted to display that information after it's submitted. So tickets repeater, what that would be is this right here, the repeater itself. In this code here, you'll see tickets creation confirmation. That would actually be the item. So to find that you would go here so just select the item right here and you'll see the name of it, ticket creation confirmation. So we've got repeater, tickets repeater, item. The idea for it is ticket creation confirmation. So all of these different items here, like so the status right here, that's the status display, date display, see right here, whoops. 
And what this is doing, <clears throat> this uh, code, which I'll share the code, I am having it submit to the CMS with this code. I'm having it displayed here only when there's something in the CMS. So if I clear out the CMS, let's go back over here. If I clear out the CMS, and refresh empty. One thing that I like about one way that it's functioning right now, and I'll leave it like this. Um, so over on my site, if I have, you know, a bunch of tickets in here, if they deleted it, it would still stay over here. So I just still have record of it. So I would manually have to do this there. Um, so that's how it works or how it's set up, I'm sorry. Um, one thing to note, very important, this will not work if you don't have, you know, this code right here will not work if this CMS on both sides, so in your CMS and theirs, you have to click right here and go to collection settings or when you set it up initially, permissions and privacy uh, just put all of these on any one on here and then save it. If it's under admin on all of these, then it will not pass that information with the HTTP. It's just not going to work. <laughs> You'll wonder like, is something wrong with the code? No, it's because of the privacy on there. Um, so this is the front end code right here that you need to put in for this page. The next step is the backend code, which if you've never been to that, you would just click this right here, open Wix IDE, click here to create a new file. You just right click here, new file, name this one. This one specifically would be named support service.jsw is what you would type in there. And then you're able to go here, enter in all of this. One thing that will be important in yours, like you'll get this code, but it'll say yourdomainname.com. You'll need to change your domain name, put your domain name right here. Then on your site, you'll create a file in the back end. So this site is a uh, editor X site. This one is a studio site. So what you'll do here, if it's a editor X site like this one, um, you'll use this code right here and it's going to use this HTTP functions import right here to import the information from the other site. So if we test it, we're looking for 200 response. There we go, we got a 200 status, so it worked. All right, so that's the project. Um, I'm sending information from this support ticket page here over to my CMS here and that is it. One thing that will be important besides just the permissions on these CMS when you set them up is how you actually uh, label the IDs for these so that it will go into the correct places with the code that we have. Where is that? There it is. All right, so say for this one right here, reporter. It says reporter display. So if we come back over here, all right, so this element right here is reporter display. So the ID for it on the front end is reporter display. But this title for this is title for this first one. So if you look here, you'll see it says reporter display dot text. So that's the type of input that it is. Item data we want to show is from title. Ticket subject, that one is named ticket subject right here. So if we look here, ticket subject and so on. You wanna recreate this two times on the client site and then also here as well. So when you look at this ID on this one, it's automatically title. I just labeled it, you know, the field name is reporter for my own sake, but as far as the code goes, it needs to be just like this or else it's not going to work. Um, in the CMS 
just as a reminder, it will not work if your privacies and permissions are not set up just like this.